Good blessed evening. Uh, coming to you with an impromptu study here. Um, it really just moved me as I was reading today and getting the lesson and some of the scriptures together for the altars, uh, for altars part one that we're going to be doing. Um, to talk about our walk uh, with Jesus Christ and also, and also the areas of battle. And there's eight of them I'm going to cover in this video here. And I'll give you scriptures with some of these as well. Uh, so the very first thing is we must accept total mastership of Jesus in every area of our lives. A lot of us understand the phrase, well, you know, Jesus take the wheel, but we'll only allow that after we've drove in the car off the road. Because Jesus kept saying, you know, God keep telling you to turn here, turn here. Don't get off right here. Stop for gas. Check engine lights on. You need to stop and do some maintenance. And we'll ignore all that and just keep going. Tank will be, the tank doesn't even read because it's on E. The tire flat in the back, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the sunroof is coming off. The front windshield is cracked, you know, like, and the car is just veering off the road. But until we get to that point, then it's like, oh, well, God, you're supposed to just come fix my life. You weren't following him in the first place. You weren't letting him take control. And the thing, funny thing is when God tells you something and he's giving you signs and you go against that, God help you. So number two is you must be willing for a total dealing of the cross in your life. At the end of my videos, I always say pick up your crosses daily. You must be willing to die to your flesh. And this is an ongoing day-to-day -day experience. So remember, every day you must renew your mind daily. You have to die to your flesh daily. You know, die to what you want and start asking God to, hey, what do you want, God? Things will get better. So, number three, uh, a willingness to lay down both your own life and the lives of your loved ones, if the Lord so chooses. So this one, uh, we're going to take a look at scripture from Genesis chapter five. I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 22. This particular set of scriptures is talking about Abraham. Um, so to get into it, uh, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass, so donkey, and took two of his, of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burning offering, and arose and went up to the place which God told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here, so that means stay here with the donkey, with the ass. Stay here with the donkey, and me and my son are going to go up here and worship and come again back to you. And Abraham took the wood, the burnt offering, and laid it upon Isaac his son, and took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood are burning. Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place in which God had told, them, told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound his son Isaac, and laid him upon the altar of the wood. Verse 10, And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And an angel of the Lord called unto him, out of heaven and said Abraham Abraham and he said here I am and he said lay not thine hand upon the lad neither do thou anything unto him for now I know that thou fearest the God seeing thou hast not withheld thy son thine only son from me and Abraham verse 13 and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in thicket by his horns and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering and instead of his son so they end up he ended up sacrificing the the, uh, the, the uh, ram which is in a thicket instead of his son but 
uh, this is what this means. All right. If it be the will of God that, uh, you know, just like with Abraham, um, God spared Isaac because this was the son that God had promised Abraham and Sarah all those many years ago. So a willingness to lay down your own life and the lives of your loved ones is exactly what this uh, means for your walk with Jesus as a follower of Jesus. Now, ver uh, number four. You must learn to hear the Lord, and you must learn to hear the Lord speak to you in your spirit. It won't be an audible voice, but it's something that sounds in your spirit, right? The Holy Spirit is your connection through Jesus to God. Remember, he, whosoever believeth in me, you know, um, shall be saved, which is Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, because Jesus is the, what, is the only way. You know, he's the only way to the Father. So if you believe in Jesus, you have access because of that to God. So number five, you must learn absolute mind control. Um, and the scripture we're going to look at for this one is 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. A lot of people get sidetracked with what's going on in their mind. And the thing is, they know these thoughts aren't of God, but they're not really, um, they're not really able to come against these things because they're weak mentally and it's because they do not they don't really they don't cast down every imagination you know it's the first battle the first va battle uh for the spirit is the battle of the mind because the enemy can also put things into our mind so second corinthians 10 5 it says casting down imaginations in every high thing that is all itself against the knowledge of god which we know is the word of god so if it's going against the word of god then it's clearly not it's, it's not of god right and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ even me um i i still use this scripture to this day uh when it's thing when it things get out of control like the thoughts that are being put in my mind get out of control um that's the scripture that i go to so remember to your your mind is a major battlefield because so we think it it gets into our heart and we end up doing it becomes action right so remember to keep your thoughts in your mind uh to those of the holy spirit and it would always it will always correlate with the word of god Okay, it will always call it the word of God. Now, um, you see, the next scripture is going to be from Matthew 5.18. Okay, so I went on to verse 5. I went on to the second. So this one's going to be from Matthew 5.18. Let's go to it. Jeremiah. Do, do, yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> uh, I found it in Matthew 5, 18. All right, so Matthew 5, 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till it all be fulfilled. So his word will not pass. His word will always stand. Okay. It, this is a promise that his word will always stand as knowledge and as truth. So you can never go wrong by living by it or coming from it. All right. So now, uh, number six, scripture memory is another important part. Uh, you know, sim just as I suggested at the end of every video, to pick up your Bibles daily. Read at least one chapter a day. Feed your spirit. When you make this a habit for your spirit, that light, the Holy Spirit that resides in you that's been given to us by uh, by Jesus and what he did on the cross. As a matter of fact, it's been given to us because of Ephesians 1, 4, really. You know, God chose us since before the foundation of the earth. So he knew what we would go to. He knew what we would go through. Um, so you can recall this at the appropriate time. And, tr and like really trust me, you know, it, it happens to me all the time. And prayer happens to me all the time when I meet people and God leads people to me um, in my day to day to, you know, to pray for them or to plant a seed or to even, you know, give them a Bible or just to sow into them. You know, it, it happens to me all the time. So um, number seven, 
number seven is talking about your authority and you must always remember what your authority is um what it is in christ and the two scriptures that i absolutely love to speak um are is luke ten nineteen and philippians four thirteen. Uh, Luke ten nineteen. Behold, I've given you the power to trample over snakes and scorpions and over all the devices of the enemy. No harm by no means shall come near your dwelling. Philippians four thirteen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the Bible is littered with even more of them. But those are just two of my favorite scriptures that I say, especially in prayer, um, just about every night to remind myself and also um, the spirits of my authority in Christ. Now, number eight is something, let's see, I'm, I'm going to get started on pulling this up. Number eight is something that's, that's taught in church, taught in church, and it's part of prosperity preaching. And um, I, I don't, and this is, it's a very fatal flaw, very fatal flaw for people to do these things. Um, and it's to never underestimate your adversary, um, the devil. Well, why do you say this? More battles have been lost because of this fatal flaw. You know, when people think, when people thought in the Bible that the armies that God had were too small, right? Uh, say that God had an army of 10,000, they were going against 250,000. That 10,000 beat that 250,000 because that 250,000 underestimated God. So again, like it's very, very, very fatal flaw to underestimate your adversary. So uh, remember, even before man, Satan was in the heavens, and then he was cast down like lightning. So he's been around since before Adam and Eve, since before man was even here. And he even caused sin to enter in man through Eve. He got her to be the first person to go against her man. <laughs> so you know, never underestimate the enemy. A lot of prosperity preachers and feel-good ministries will teach you that he is weak and that he is nothing. This is a false teaching, absolutely false teaching. And this is why it's so important that you make it a habit that you yourself stay in the word of God for yourself so that you know how to fight via the proper scriptures. And um, that only comes from your personal relationship with God and Christ. So... We're going to take a look at 1 Peter 5, verse 8, and it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaming lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. This man has been roaming around all the creation for over, over, what, a millennia. Just tripping people up, getting them to fall down into sin, getting them to... You know, do all types of crazy stuff, man. Hold on one second. I thought that was another. Okay, there, oh, there is, but I'll get to that one in a bit. So this scripture clearly is speaking about how powerful the adversary is. I don't know about you, but if a man goes toe to toe with a lion, you think he gonna survive that fight, or you think the the lion gonna devour him and be licking his bones in ten minutes? So it's talking about how powerful the adversary is and that it's a common lie in the modern church that he's in hell. This is an absolute deception and it's false preaching. And it makes sense why God, why Jesus said, you are, you all are a brood of vipers because you're snakes. Telling people that the devil's in hell. It's a lie from the devil himself, actually, until revelations comes to pass. You know, he will not meet his end in the fiery pit. So he, him and his workers of iniquity that are here, they're not going to be cast down into the fiery pit until revelations comes to pass. So you guys have to be, be vigilant. Be vigilant. You know, I've talked about it before in Matthew I think it was like 1835, but it's in the description of my channel. Well, I was talking about how the people in your own house, the people that you call friend, will stab you in the back and they'll get you to turn away from those who have actually come to save you. So be vigilant and aware and watch your circle. You know, I, I, I talked to, you know, some people that will entertain all manner of workers of iniquity for the sake of being comfortable in the world. 
but they will never progress in their God-ordained destiny due to their disobedience and allowing these workers of iniquity into their circle knowingly. And the scripture, the scripture that came to mind for that was in, uh, let's see, it's Hebrews 10, 26. Right, let's go ahead. All right, so Hebrews 10, 26. And it says, for if we sin willingly, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So you really have to watch, okay, hey, is this person telling me, is this person, especially some of you people that are just followers. There's a lot of followers out here. A lot of followers out here. You know, you guys would be like, oh, well, hey, I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I really like my friend. And, you know, say, for instance, I really like my friend. Uh, you know, he's a good guy. But, you know, he uh, he was in there doing witchcraft for He was in there like, I don't know, like fornicating or something like that. Like, no, he, he, he was in there stealing from people, whatever it is. But I'm going to still hang around with that person. Remember the scripture, and you should know them by their fruit. What fruit do you think they're going to produce and that you're going to reap from by having that person in your circle? You think they're going to lead you on a godly path? Or do you think you need to get with somebody? Or do you think you need to um, find somebody that's got you in your word every day? Do you think you need to be with somebody that's praying with you, that's... Um, fasting with you man like that's just like talking about god with you every day or do you think it's better for you to be with that person that's uh stealing from people uh doing witchcraft fornicating whatever it is they're doing the people that you hang around with or that you put in your circle their benefit not not their benefit what they produce you're going to eat of that too because you're around that you're a tree that is planted, right? If you're a tree that's planted, if a good tree is planted in a vineyard full of uh, spoiled trees, full of bad fruit, do you think that that good tree is going to make all those other trees good trees? Or is the, that one good tree in that vineyard of bad trees going to become corrupted and this fruit is going to be just as nasty? So you guys have to be ever... Vigilant and stop underestimating the enemy. Time works differently. It's, there's all, it's almost like there isn't time in the spiritual realm. But time works differently in the spiritual realm. How much they say a day is like a thousand years in the spirit. So how much longer do you think that they've had time to connive? They've had time to come up with plans. They've had time to get situated. Stop underestimating the enemy, man. That's one of the things I, I you know, I don't do. And, and that's why I don't, me personally, I don't have the patience for people that'll, um, you know, I don't have the patience, patience for people that'll, dis, that'll disrespect you because it's, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. They know the spirits they're coming into agreement with. So, hey, me personally, I, 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 I'll let you go and deal with that all by yourself. I, I don't want that nasty negative fruit that you're trying to bring over corrupt me. I'm trying to produce some good fruit. So people can look at my tree and eat, and pick off and eat some of that good fruit. And those seeds they eating from my good fruit will be planted in them. And the next thing you know, they're growing their own good tree. And the next thing you know, God got a vineyard. Just like we talked about the uh, parable of the farmers, Jesus got a vineyard. That he can go say, oh, go pick off my tree uh, I planted in Germany. Go pick off my tree I planted in, uh, in, 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 in Michael or Brianna or whoever. So, those are the eight things um, really that we should be doing in our walk. But, you know, as far as our areas of battle, and I can tell you, being, checking off this list right here, um... You know, I can give my testimony. It's, it really helped in how God used me um, doing that deliverance thing. It really helped me. I didn't even know he had me checking this list off. But he did. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, uh, those things are still mad today. You know, uh, you, you, 
you think that I don't see them in my dreams? I still do. They still mad. <laughs> but that's the video, guys. Um, I'm pretty complete and tired. Oh my God, over you guys, the uh, boots quicken with the gospel of peace, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt, the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the word, and the sh your shield of faith to quench the fiery arrow shot at you by the enemy. I plead the blood of Jesus over you all as well, according to Job 1.10, so that you may have a hedge of protection around you, your cars, your vehicles, your homes, your families, and your very persons. And everything that God has given you on either side. In Jesus' name we pray. Touch and agree together. Amen and amen. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this one. I pray that you guys got the spiritual knowledge out of this one. And understand that you're not in this fight alone. Uh, That's so why my contact is in the description box. Also the playlist. Uh, you know, worship, spiritual warfare. All that stuff is in the description box as well. So you guys don't have to... Um, you know, ask or wait to the end of the video. It, every time, it's always in the description box. So uh, that you guys have every weapon at your disposal. Even the Bible is your chief weapon at your disposal. But these videos, uh, this playlist that I've created, have have vital knowledge in them as well to help you guys move forward in the in the spiritual warfare. So you guys stay blessed, and I will catch you guys on the next one.